Hi, I'm Charlie Meadows. On behalf of the John Birch Society, we are at the state capitol in Oklahoma City. Uh, joining me today uh, is recently retired Oklahoma State Senator Randy Brogdon. Uh, next to him is State Representative Charles Key from Oklahoma City. And then on, on, further around on the right here is State Representative Mike Ritz from uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Uh, welcome to this uh, roundtable discussion, gentlemen. Thank you. So, uh, many Americans uh, believe that the federal government has become too powerful. It's outside of its boundaries uh, as enumerated in Article I, Section 8 of the United States Constitution. And they're very concerned about it. And it's really led to a lot of frustration. And uh, so with that frustration, they're, they're trying to find answers. They're looking for what do we do to solve the problem of this runaway, tyrannical federal government today? And so uh, they, they're coming up with solutions. And some of these solutions could actually be, I think, real harmful to our nation and its future. So tell us just briefly, Randy, what, what is one of the most popular misguided efforts out there today? Well, Charlie, not only misguided, but probably one of the most dangerous uh, options that's on the table today uh, are legislators and politicians around this country calling for a constitutional convention. I believe it would be devastating to uh, the United States of America as our founding fathers gave it to us, but there is a move around the state to call for conventions. Uh, and it's, we, we would be much better off to, if we want to amend the Constitution, to go through the amendment process, not a convention. Um, Charles, I'm going to ask you a question now. Uh, we're really seeing this ramp up right now, this effort to call a CONCON. -con. A lot of different groups, as Randy was saying there. Would you kind of just give us a little bit of the history uh, of, of the ideas for a CONCON? -con? Well, yeah, it's not new. It's been uh, uh, some, an idea that's been brought up many times over the decades. It goes back to the 60s and the 70s uh, when people got concerned about the federal government growing bigger and bigger debt problems, uh, continually going outside the bounds of the uh, Constitution. And so this is not a new idea. It's something that's been proposed for probably 30 or 40 years. Over the years, uh, there's been a real struggle between advocates of the Constitutional <coughs> Convention and those of us that are opposed the con to a Constitutional Convention. And that's created a lot of friction. Uh, what, what have the states done? What's been the reaction of the states over many years now? Well, throughout the years, there have been a lot of states that have actually called for a convention, but uh, in very recent history, and certainly here in Oklahoma, we have rescinded our previous calls for a, a constitutional convention uh, for the, th the reasons that we've already talked about. But the states are now, uh, the state legislators are getting active, they're, they're being proactive in writing legislation to rescind uh, their previous calls. And I, I would imagine there's a lot of uh, elected officials in the state houses around the country that may not even know that their state has in, uh, already called for a convention. So it would be good to rescind that this year. I think, you know, the first state to do that was uh, back in 1988, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was uh, Florida and maybe Alabama at the same time. And how many states have rescinded uh, their calls for CONCON -con now? Uh, Sixteen so far. And uh, Oklahoma, we, we wrote legislation two years ago, and we have uh, rescinded our call very recently. Okay. Now, uh, I think it was two years ago we rescinded our call. Yet what happened in the session earlier this year, Charlie, and uh, uh, as far as uh, maybe leadership uh, rethinking that? Yeah, how soon we forget. You know, we had some leadership that brought up the idea of, <clears throat> excuse me, calling for a con con again. And we had a discussion in one of our meetings uh, about that. It was brought up. And uh, some of the leadership had forgotten that just the previous year we had rescinded that that call for a CONCON. -con. So it was quickly uh, 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 put down by many of the members. Mike, I want to ask you this. Uh, can we compare a state constitutional convention to perhaps a CONCON -con call from the states to amend the, the U.S. Constitution? Well, states are autonomous and they have vary from state to state and they have limitations on constitutional conventions. There are no limit limitations on the federal uh, level and they can uh, call it, they can write it, and they can destroy the Constitution that we know as a precious document. So are you saying, Mike, that if we did call a CONCON -con, that it would be very difficult to uh, limit it and regulate the uh a constitution. I think histori history and historians have told us that it would probably be difficult, very difficult to uh, limit it. Okay. 
Charlie, I want to ask you a question now. Now, we've heard a lot of reasons as to why we need a CONCON, such as a balanced budget amendment, term limits, uh, line item veto, many, many different issues out there. If, if the states were to call for a CONCON, uh, how could the states set limits for such a convention? Well, th they really could not. Now, there's a lot of people that are proposing that the states could do that. And, and there's a lot of legislators that think that they could, and they could attempt to do it. But history tells us that when we've had constitutional convention in the past, that it has never stayed on the single subject or subjects that it was supposed to address. It always ventures out into many other subjects. And in addition to that, we have a host of, uh, of witnesses or, or experts, I should say, that have addressed this question, former Supreme Court justices. Uh, Warren Berger, for one, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Arthur Goldberg, uh, such well-known uh, law professors such as Lawrence Tribe of Harvard, Charles Rice of Notre Dame Law School. One of those is conservative, one's a liberal. There's, there's Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, conservatives, liberals, that the majority agree that if you have a constitutional convention, you may think that you can require it to stay on a single subject, but you can't. Um, Randy, I want to ask you a question. Now, let's just say, for example, that uh, the, the proponents of a CONCON -con do win out and we convene one. Let's say it actually did a good job. Uh, is there, would there be a problem with that? Well, I think there'd be a very serious problem with it because, in fact, it would set a precedence. And I believe it would make it easier and easier to have another constitutional convention. We haven't had one since 1787, and we've rocked along pretty, pretty well. Uh, so far, and once it, once a new convention uh, is called, and like Charles said, everything would be on the table, and if everything didn't go quite the way that they wanted at that time, they could come right back and call another one, and I think we would be in danger of almost having a perpetual convention, and uh, again, that would just destroy the very fabric of our country. So would you say then that citizen activists maybe that are in organizations that are pushing for a con con, Maybe they'd be a lot better off just working on their individual uh, U.S. congressman to, to accomplish something like that. Is, Absolutely. is that a reasonable thought? Absolutely. Yes, I think it's very important to uh, change the process the simplest way possible, the least expensive, the less problems uh, of going through the process. Now, Mike, I want to ask you another question. Some of those uh, that are wanting a con, con right now are referring to our form of government as a democracy. Now, isn't that a little bit revealing with... Uh, uh, some of the problems that might exist within some of the people that are calling for these uh, con-cons? Well, by the inherent definition, we're not a democracy, we're a republic. And we have to realize that uh, we are ruled by constitutional law, the U.S. Constitution, which this document gives us a system to make uh, uh, the corrections, if necessary, properly and not to, to waste the precious time of, uh, of uh, those involved in the process. Let's just ask a question here that I think is real important. If there are some needed amendments, and amendments would be good, are you opposed, Randy, to amending the Constitution? I'm not necessarily opposed to amending the Constitution. I'm opposed to amending it through a constitutional convention. Uh, for example, let's say that we had a constitutional convention because uh, people wanted to have a balanced budget. Now, that sounds good on its surface, but if you do not have very specific language in the balanced budget amendment itself, saying the only, I mean, the best way to, to balance the budget is to reduce spending. If that language is not in there, guess what? Then we're left with a balanced budget amendment, and the only other option is to raise taxes. So that is much uh, better to be dealt with through the legislative process, not through a con-con. What, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Charlie, as far as, should we be opposed to any amendments? Well, there's probably very few people in this country that's against a balanced budget, and especially when you look at what the federal government has done uh, over quite a number of decades. But, you know, if we just looked at the last few years, the last 10 years, uh, people, this is the number one issue, the economic issue, the fiscal issue. So everyone is concerned about the problem we have with the federal government putting right. us into debt to future generations. But again, this is not the answer, having a constitutional convention. There is another way, and Senator Brogdon just mentioned that. Yeah, I think if people understood there was another way besides the constitutional convention and fully understood 
the pitfalls and the possible the problems dangers. with a CONCON, they would get behind this other method, which has worked more frequently and, and more often through the history of our country, and get behind that effort because I think uh, we might be able to get it done in that method. Yeah. Now, perhaps part of that method, Mike, would be uh, changing out certain elected officials in the federal government. And in this last election cycle, we just changed out a large number of them. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a good point. I think that uh, what we have to look at is uh, it's a constant process of retooling the elected as well as the electorate. Uh, human nature is that uh, repetition is the essence of learning, and we need to learn well the constitutions of our federal system as well as our state system to be able to make sure that our elected officials understand that. And if we do not continue to uh, elect constitutionalists to the uh, primarily the most important uh, branch, I think, is the House of Representatives because they control the money. Uh, and as a result, if we don't get people involved at a grassroots level to educate uh, all of the uh, people around them as well as the elected officials, then we've lost the game from the, from the beginning. Back to the balanced budget amendment, it's an oxymoron. You cannot have a budget unless it's balanced. And that's one of the arguments that we have to look at, whether it's the line item veto or term limits or whatever it is. Whoever is, is changing the rules and then interprets the rules, unfortunately, we know the courts are not always uh, tuned to the Constitution. And we have to realize that the states will have to take that back and initiate that in many instances and, and control it, rescind these con-con calls, and then uh, educate the electorate. I want to compliment you three men for not only being constitutionalists, but actually believing in the high moral principles of service and good government, and I just want to thank you so much for being a part of this roundtable today. Thank Welcome. you very much.